Hello everyone, Linda Israel here, and today I thought I would share with you how to make some cute little tags to add to your journals. These tags are made out of book pages, rubber stamps, tattered angels, glimmer mist, a digital image from Calico Collage, and some fabric. So I've got here a book page. Now, depending on your book page and what you want to put on top of it will determine the size of your tags. This is approximately nine and a half inches by seven inches. First thing I want to do is fold this in half. I want it to be sturdy, so I'm picking a book page that has a little bit of heft to it. If your page is very lightweight, you may want to glue a couple together and then start this process. Now what I want to do is come in here and add some glue so that we can make this basically one unit. I'm just using an old gift card, you could use your bone folder, whatever you have on hand to smooth that out. Now, while it is in this form, I want to decorate it a little bit, and then I'm going to cut it up into four pieces. So to start with, on one side, I want to paint white acrylic paint. I want to paint white acrylic paint. So I've just got standard white acrylic paint and a paintbrush, and I'm just dipping it directly into the bottom and just painting the whole thing. The idea is I just want to obscure the text just a little bit so we can write on this because it is going to be a tag for inside of a journal. This is perfect if you don't have access to basically clean paper that doesn't have any printing or something on one side. You can use acrylic paint. And I think that's a pretty good coat of paint. I'll clean off my brush, set the paint aside. I'll use my heat tool to dry it if I'm in a hurry. If I'm not, I'll just let it sit on my desk for a few minutes until I'm ready to do the next step. Now I'm flipping it over to the other side and I have a really dark green Tattered Angels. This was called a Christmas Dream Christmas Tree and I believe I sold out of this color. Another color that would be close that I have in my shop as open stock would be vintage green that's really dark like this and maybe you already have a green so what i'm going to do is take some of this and spray it into my spray palette here and i have some water that i'm adding to it to kind of dilute it just a little bit because now what i want to do is take this and paint over the whole page on the other side so the first side was acrylic paint and this side is Tattered Angels. I'll use a paper towel to just kind of wipe up any excess. Now, of course, I have way more than I need, but I'll set it aside. I'll use it from something else later on. While I have this side up, I've got a different color. This is Merry Little Christmas Holly. So it was a different shade of green. It kind of reminds me of maybe an avocado with an iridescent sheen to it. And what I want to do now is just spritz over the whole thing. So what that will do is just kind of give us a little variation of hues back and forth. And I'll dry this real fast with a heat tool. I'm flipping it back over to this side. I'm going to use that same lighter shade of holly green and spritz the back. So it kind of gives a little bit of color over that white. So it's not stark white. All right, so it's pretty much dry. I have the three leaves stamp from Beeline Design and jet black ink, archival ink by Ranger. And what I wanna do is just stamp over the whole page on the green side. I have something in my eye. I'm rotating the stamp and paper just to kind of get different coverage all over. And it did come I didn't adhere it all the way, but it's okay. I am going to be sewing on this later. So the next thing I want to do is to cut this in half. So I'm just going to find my center mark, center mark here. I'll use my distress inks to help me. And I will cut this in half. And then I will cut this in half. So again, I'm just creasing it. And I'll mark it. I'll stack these on top of each other and cut those. All right, so now what I want to do is make these a tag shape. So I have an old gift card that I've cut the notch off of it. So what I want to do is just line this up. And sometimes I can cheat 
and stack all of them at the same time. Depends if they are exactly the same size. And I will trim the corner off and then flip this over and do the other side. All right, so the next thing I want to do is let's add some distress inks to the edges of all four of those. I'm using walnut stain and a blending tool. Use whatever you like. I just found that this was the best product for me. I want to add a piece of fabric to the top, so I'm just going to line these all up. And I've got my ID slot punch, so it's just got a slot across the top there. And we'll push it in the middle and punch that out. So now those all have the holes in them. I have some coffee dyed fabric, it's some cotton fabric that I coffee dyed. And I think what I want to do is I know I want, oh, about that much. So that would be one, two, three, and four. So I'll use my scissors to cut it. And I want to stamp on the fabric. So I have the patchouli rubber stamp. This comes in two pieces. You get the word and you get the leaves and I will just stamp over the fabric. So if you don't have a large stash of printed fabrics, but maybe you have some old sheets or you have some muslin or white fabric just laying around, dye it with some coffee and then you can stamp over it. So now I'm just gonna take this and cut it into four pieces and make my little tops for my tags. Now I'm gonna go over to the sewing machine and stitch all the way around. I have a regular sewing machine. Mine is a brother. It's a few years old. They don't make this model, but you can find one on in the marketplace just about anywhere. And it is set up to be a zigzag stitch. I have a regular needle, regular thread. I always recommend that you get new thread in your sewing machine. Don't use grandma's old stash for sewing with a sewing machine because it becomes brittle with age. Use it for mixed media or to add what I call a bird's nest of thread. I'm just going to stitch all the way around and do each one. When I get to a corner, what I do is I'll raise my presser foot with the needle down and rotate it around and then I can stretch, go ahead and stitch down the other side. Well, now our foundations have been created, so you can, at this point, stack them up in the corner, and when you have a moment, spend some time adding some embellishments to the top. I'm going to use these images from the Apothecary Kit from Norella of Calico Collage. I printed mine on text weight paper because I didn't feel that it needed to be super thick, and I'll just place it right in the center. Yes, it does cover up some of the rubber stamping, but I feel like it just helps with the overall pattern that we have on our little tags. And then I'll flip these over to the back side, and I have this little stamp set of figure one through four. So I will stamp each number on the back of each one of these tags. And here are the finished tags. You can see the backs and the fronts of those that we've decorated them with book pages and a couple of digital images and rubber stamps and some fabric. I think this is a fun project that, like I said, you could make a bunch of just the blank tags and then have those set aside. And then when you're ready, you can put images or rubber stamped images or digital images or magazine images, whatever you have on top. All right, everybody, I hope you liked this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, comment below about anything that you had about this, thoughts about this project. If you have questions, please feel free to ask. Check the description box for links for the products that I use today. Also, for my social media connectors, my Facebook page, as well as Instagram and Twitter. Hey, did you know I go live on Mondays at 3.45 p.m. Central Standard Time? Come hang out with us. I make a journal live on Monday. All right, everybody. Have a fabulous day, and thank you so much for watching. Hey, subscribe if you haven't already. Bye.